Chapter 16. Mom's Racism is Born of Virginia Law as Her Only Protection. Protection against being a slave as encased in law in Virginia made white supremacy one of necessity, not of hate. This is a very important point and is the singular way to argue against racism. The Dutch slave traders learned that it needed the money of the crown to fund ships to the New World. The people had to support these ventures or no funds. It was public relations, and they had a printing press. The ads in England to entice patriots to go to America were brash, racist, and worked. Worked for centuries. The ships, the ship logs from the period show every passenger landing in Virginia from 1606 on. The clear message is the early passengers were free people, mostly. Many marked as gentlemen, some carpenters, and one surgeon. The logs changed as time went on in Virginia, and the passengers were more and more servants and then slaves. Commerce changed to feed power to a few at the expense of men. Mom's law made the production of slaves a construct. It also institutionalized racism and gave rise to mom spouting white supremacy. Yes, the first black legal slave in America was owned by a black man. But the golden rule was in place in business, law, and religion. Without the free black man at the beginning of America, it would not have survived. Without the black man as slave, America would not have survived. Note, if the black man was not enslaved, the creativity available would not have been quashed, and America would have had hip-hop so much sooner. Really? we would have a very different pop cultural history if blacks were free and remained free. Our history of foundation is greed. The Virginia Company of London is the driver, and Booze probably did the rest. Chapter 17. Johnson and Parker play a game of cards. Still, Amy and Anthony Johnson knew what it took to survive and thrive in colonial Virginia. They had to always be nice to the white man and to show that Tony was the man. This was right before the Johnsons moved to Maryland. The feeling in town is one of hate, bewilderment, and the praise for better days. Fights broke out among town folk more often, and now more bad shit was happening to non-whites. Tony Johnson was a big man, so that contributed to his success and survival. Robert conveyed to Tony after several rounds of drinks that George was in love with Amy. It was like a bomb dropped. Years of holding back took the back seat, and Tony let Colonel Robert Parker have it. Not physical. Tony knew better. This time he would take all of Robert's money in poker. His usual of letting him win was a win a little was no longer acceptable. Tony was a professional and said, Oh yeah, Amy is beautiful, and continued to shuffle the cards. The tone of the room changed, and Robert sensed the game of his life was at hand. Chapter 18 The Ending It was a wonder that John Kaser never really visited the history books. Today, to see the johnkaser.com available, and Kaser not being in the Microsoft Dictionary, this tells me much. This story is not told because a black man owned the first legal slave in America. 
The shame of this allowed every community to basically ignore this important man and his story. But John Kaser's ghost told a very different love story. When Johnson took his wife, he soon learned she came from John Kaser's village. After he arrived in 1648, she was of Ndongo, which you may have figured out by now is the Garden of Eden, and that the greed of commerce is what slayed the peas, not the apple or the snake, just plain greed. When Kaser asked to be free, Johnson warned him it is not all that it is cracked up to be. Kaser was determined to show he was a man, he was in love with Johnson's daughter. He was determined to show he could care for her. Johnson repeated his warnings as often as he could, telling his wife to pass on wisdom learned in the Virginia jungle. The white man was the greediest of all men, and they wrote the law and was, was the phrase he'd use. Kaser was determined still. As he demanded to go, his love told Papa to let him go. It seems all the family only thought it fair. To teach Kaser, soon to be his son, a lesson that the wicked white man was as bad as he told. Anthony Johnson lost Kaser to Robert Parker in 1653 in a card game. Johnson's daughter was horrified and wept for weeks. Kaser was stoic as usual and went to farm Parker's estate. It was a year of hell, and he would note to his sweetie any chance he got. It told of a dark part of hell, and one he must leave. The old blacks knew that being owned in a group is much better than being owned by anyone. By just being black, the possibility of becoming others' property was much, much higher. By law. Johnson's daughter hatched the plan to sue in court to gain back John Kaser. The victory and freedom came to John Kaser when he was named the first legal slave for life in America. John Kaser and Amy Johnson married soon after, and together grew the Johnson Farms. The End 1600 to 1669 Or is it? Hole 19, dangerous art and anger that made me go off the net. The black background stared back, but as the rage against stealing kids by Trump hit home, the hood of hate showed up. It was now out in the open, the racist affiliations, the hand signals and the snake prayers. Soon it became clear that if you could show you were a white racist, you could get into America. Trump spat out this sentiment from the moment paid hands clapped as he rode down his golden escalator. Go away, you are not white. The racist past got away with it. They are now in the White House. Uncle Sam's ghost of this racist past is here. The hood is telling him a story, but the blind follow anyway. Did you see Trump in London today? July 13th, 2018. Friday the 13th is accented with Trump being Putin's bitch in public. R is for racist. The new scarlet letter is R. A retired a. Retired. Don't. Be. R. Putin's bitch. All roads lead to Moscow. The fear is the new Trump Supreme Court will not just trash Roe v. Wade. It will deregulate all of American society. Anarchy of the capitalists. The overwhelming sad part of American and slave history is the use of the church to get the white masses to be okay with it. Just as long as they were getting into heaven, the church could hang slaves for profit. The members are good and the non-members are slave continues today in the church. 
The obsessive nature of the pastor is power and demanding dogma control of his subjects. Only members get into the house of the Lord. The preachers pervert the word to then make gold the path to get in. Really adding rocket fuel to the slave trade and its acceptance, adoption, promotion, and profiteering of the church by enslaving non-members. You want to be saved? Stop sending frauds your money. There, you saved. It makes me cry to see the modern Republican Party to be taken over by racists so overtly. R equals R. I cry. Really? Lock him up. He cannot pardon himself. And this is Sarah Sanders? The gay whale. Gay in time was happy. So until that was pointed out, what were you thinking? Get off Fox News. You once were found. Now you are Fox. Every speech now spews hate from Trump. Migrants are taking away our culture the culture of hate. Don't be an empty voter. The real harmed ones are the children, as the inept Trump administration demonstrated hate to its base. The more savage they can be, the more numb America becomes. The erosion, the erosion started facts with alternative facts. Then the Muslim ban was announced loud and clear, both in the rear of the campaign and the signings as president. The cancel of all things Obama sure seems like it is just because he is black. Really? TPP? And you pull out? What a putz! Paris to save the planet and launch a new technology race that will save us. Nope, cancel that too. Tell Canada it's a national security risk and piss on their soil. Stealing kids broke my heart. I had to leave Facebook as the racists stood tall and proud sharing their Obama is a monkey memes. God awful stuff. The real POW MIA? Mom did not like me saying the truth because the outsider got hurt. Soon, Uncle Bob Clapp was spewing, and I replied with R equals R. Mom, I'm glad I quit Facebook. I, however, had a red face. I drew more really bad art and studied my history. The white man ate our humanity with Latin and law, helped by the churchmen. I need you to look past door number one. Don't take the easy path. Pocahontas and John Rolfe at a costume party? Look past number one. Let humanity free. Give freedom. Our country needs surgery. Impeach! The truth is Trump has blue lips. They're not brown from kissing up. Blue lips sink ships. You must bear witness. Look at the kids. Stop Trump. Love is broken in America. Where is your love of family, kids, and the pursuit of happiness? Oh, my cockabee. Learn that running for president allowed spread of hate. Put your hood back on. CS13, Huckabee's Church of the Hood. Here's your R. Wear it proud. Chapter 20. Starting the 1700s in hiding. The boiling lake of Guadalupe carried with it stories of how the mutineers were executed, boiled alive after a brutal hike. Lest we forget, the church is the known responsible party for starting the sugar slave complex. 
a sweet tooth for hell's angels. Really, you should check your faith in this Christianity thing. The abuse of this church is gross and has not a place in nature. 18th of June, 1452, Pope Nicholas V issues Dum de Veres, a bull authorizing the Portuguese to reduce any non-Christians to the status of slaves. See the website. The Pope and all the greedy use the church to downtrod on everyone not a member. It's the same sickness today, perverting God's words or his messenger as it being okay to make slaves of others. The faithful carried their Latin with them to the new world. The form of Latin approved by the church to use the word of God to engage in slavery. Not just a customer of slavers, but an actual slaver empire. The sugar slave complex when ground down is not sweet. The Pope should return all slave gains. The difference in passage for John Kaser and Anthony Johnson was astounding compared to the 1700s. The creep of MBA profit at all cost and any means set the ships of the 1700s to be sailing coffins. The destruction of America before their very eyes was heartbreaking for Tony and John. By Tony's death in 1670, Virginia was no longer a welcome place for the black man. Tony's heart would have gone cold at the slave trade from the 1700s to 1867. It was easy to write about John Kaser and Nadongo. What follows will the be what follows will be the most disgusting things I will read. I know my trepidation will control my keyboard, but really, Mom's Law is so horrid. It is vital for the reader to see the impact of the church and its taint on the soul of America. We must defeat the leftover of Mom's Law. Of the belly comes ownership is derived from hell. Again, we look at the monarchy aided by church doctrine that made the slave trade a national occupation. The same people that regularly profited from human misery brought it to America early. When the monopoly of the monarch-backed Royal African Company was broken by statute, the slave trade exploded. By 1698, RAC had imported 100,000 slaves. Every ship became a simple cattle call, with no regard for humanity whatsoever. It was cheaper to have 20% death on the crossing than to feed and provide buckets. Close your eyes and sloss next to your dead friend for a minute. Jim Morrison sang, five and one, baby, one and five, no one here gets out alive. Jim knew death early and expressed it often. Please see our Library of Congress for these pictures in this book. And search for slaves, and then your family name. Look at history. The majority of images come directly from the Library of Congress. The images are being used to convey the story of slavery in America from the point of view of hate as the propaganda machine that fueled man consumption.